Good morning. Good morning. Well, you heard it. Christmas is here. Happy holidays. First of all, welcome to everyone who's joining us via live stream. Thanks for being with us in that way. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who participated in the gift exchange that we did with the kids at the North Valley Caring Services, everyone who was a volunteer. It was, yes, it was a beautiful event, so heartwarming, and you all got to be part of it. So thank you for that. So here we are, right smack in the middle of this holiday, what some of us refer to as a marathon, right? We went from Thanksgiving, we're moving into the winter solstice very soon, followed by Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, New Year's. Wow, <laughs> we've got a lot of holiday going on here. And you know, I think there's so many, so many wonderful aspects of this holiday season, um, even if they can get a little bit frantic sometimes. I mean, admittedly, let's be honest, we can feel a bit stressed sometimes trying to adjust our schedules so we can fit in those holiday gatherings that we want to uh, join in. There's probably some pressure going on if we're hosting those gatherings. And yes, of course, there's that age-old pressure of the gift exchange, finding the right gifts. How much do we really have to spend this year? Um, but I think for the most part, for most of us, when we work through these issues, we end up feeling really grateful that we did. We get to feel the joy of having, A, made the time to join in those uh, different gatherings, and B, found a way to share our love and our generosity with others. I think this season calls upon us to be more fully open to share those aspects of God's nature that lives in each and every one of us and uh, you know, to, to activate and, and connect with and share the joy, share the beauty, share the generosity, the love, the peace. And hopefully, you know, I would really hope that as we align with these qualities and recognize, put our focus on them during this time, that they're always there and that we carry that idea into the new year as we go forward in, into our day-to-day -day lives after the holidays are over. But I also want to acknowledge that this can be a really difficult and even painful time of year for some. You know, for those who might be facing major challenges in their life, they can feel out of sync with this holiday spirit and what we say it's all supposed to be about. I mean, after all, what are we told about it? It's tis the season to be jolly. You know, it's time to be merry and bright, or my favorite, it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> and it can be, unless maybe you're facing a major health challenge, a relationship problem, maybe something's gone sour in a really important relationship, financial crisis, loss of loved ones, you know, the, the disparity between the theme of the holidays and our current circumstances at times can actually exacerbate the pain that some might be experiencing at this time. And let's add to that the fact that this is a time for traditional celebrations. You know, there are ways that we've celebrated these holidays over the years that maybe we won't be able to this time around. You know, gatherings with family, with certain friends, gift exchanges, certain places that we go, but you know, as we know, things here on the earth plane, they're constantly changing. You know, the world of conditions is constantly in motion. Nothing stays the same. Loved ones move away or pass away. Our schedules and other commitments, you know, those might get in the way of attending some of those gatherings that we usually attend. Our finances, something may have happened and may preclude us being able to participate in the holidays the way we did. I mean, all kinds of, all kinds of changes can occur that make us realize that we can't 
celebrate the holiday the way we're accustomed to. And so, you know, I think there's really no surprise that this can also be a time when many, many people feel very depressed, feel very uh, disheartened, feel excluded, which I think is really sad in this time, which is the whole holiday tone is one of love and inclusivity. And you know, this point was really driven home to me years back when I first became a minister serving here at this church. And we had a, an elder congregant whose husband of over 60 years passed away in early November. And traditionally, she and her husband would spend their holidays with their, her, their children and their grandchildren. Uh, one of the children would host for the whole family each year. And this year, since she was so sad, since she was in this state of grief, her children asked her if she wouldn't mind trying to find some other way to celebrate the holidays because they were concerned that because she was so sad, it might spoil the holidays for their children, her grandchildren. Luckily, I'd had years and years of training as a practitioner and a minister, so I could hear about that without any sense of judgment. <laughs> So I'll tell you that things turned out well in the end. There was actually a big healing around that, so I'll tell you more about that later, so you have to stay. Um, <laughs> but you know, that whole experience really exemplified to me this idea of our expectation for everyone having to be in a certain state of mind. Uh, you know, why this sense of not fitting into the holiday spirit can come on so strongly. And you know, what we teach in Science of Mind is worldly conditions change all the time. You know, things in this finite material world are in constant motion, but the God nature in each of us, in everything, never changes. It's always there. It's immutable. God's nature is present in everything, in everyone, in every moment. And all of our holidays and their themes, you know, and the traditions that go along with them really are just a way for us to experience and express different aspects of God's nature. But the underlying qualities of God's nature that are in these holidays, those qualities are in us no matter what. They're not dependent on conditions to be a certain way. They're not dependent on certain kinds of traditions and ways of doing things for us to experience them and express them. I mean, let's, let's look at this. Thanksgiving. Can we not feel gratitude every moment of our lives? There's a capacity within us to be grateful no matter what, to find something to be grateful for. If we look at the holiday of the winter solstice, you know, that idea of honoring that stillness in the winter and this day that is going to be the longest day of darkness, that new light is going to come forth. And that, to me, is symbolic of that part of us that can be still and open to possibilities of good beyond what we've known before the holiday of Hanukkah, you know, the miracle of the light that when the Jewish people reclaimed their temple in Jerusalem and they lit the menorah, there was only enough oil for one day and yet it burned for eight days till they could create more purified oil. To me, that's symbolic of the, the light of the divine that lives in our hearts no matter what, that when we tap into it, we will find it's it can't be extinguished. It's always there. Then we have Christmas, which is an idea of, of the birthing of Christ, which in Science of Mind, we talk about Christ as the consciousness that knows itself to be one with God, that we all get to be vessels through which that God nature is birthed into the world. 
Kwanzaa has this theme of you know, celebrating the, the harvest, but it's got a lot of emphasis on community and brotherhood. We can always feel connected to others. We can always feel a sense of being one with our you know, spiritual brothers and sisters. And then the new year, the sense of new beginnings. Well, every moment with every breath that we take is a new beginning for us. There's always a way for us to start anew. And along with these um, holidays, there are these traditions of gathering, connecting, give, giving gifts, sharing gifts. These, these uh, rituals are things we can engage in in some way or another. We always have something to give, be it a smile, be it an act of kindness, be it a prayer. You know, there's always a way for us to connect with others, even if it's just in our hearts. We can always feel our connection. So the spiritual essence of these holidays lies within us all the time. There's always a way for us to remain included in that vibrational tone of the holidays in our own personal ways. And so I think if any of us are losing sight of that, and you know we're feeling like that misfit around the holiday season, I think we could be inspired by the young kindergarten boy, Norman, and how he dealt with a situation of possibly being a misfit. Uh, Norman was the kind of outsider in his kindergarten class, you know, the kid that got teased a lot that didn't quite fit in with the others. And uh, his kindergarten teacher was asked to put on a play for her kindergarten class to put on a play for a teacher's conference. And so she and the class got together and they decided to put on the story of Cinderella. And so all the kids gathered and they all got a part. The teacher was so happy that every child had a part, except when she looked over, guess who didn't have a part? Norman. And she felt really awkward about this, but she went up to him and just quietly asked, uh, Norman, do you want to be in the play? And Norman enthusiastically answered, yes, I do. So she asked, well, Norman, let's see, what part might you want to play? And he looks up and he goes, I'll play the pig. And she looks at him, she goes, um, Norman, there is no pig in Cinderella. To which Norman replies, there is now. So the teacher thought, well, why not? How could it hurt? So Norman got to be the pig. And so the kids you know, went into rehearsal for the next few days and weeks. And Norman's mother made him the cutest little pig outfit, complete with you know, a little Dixie cup for a snout. And Norman decided he was Cinderella's watch pig. You know, instead of a watchdog, he was the watch pig. He followed her around everywhere. And they said, you could tell what was happening to Cinderella based on Norman's face. When she was left behind by her stepmother and stepsisters, Norman's face was so sad. But then when the fairy godmother arrived and she got to go to the ball, Norman was just elated. And when the prince slipped the glass slipper on her foot, Norman just couldn't contain himself. He was ecstatic. He started jumping up and down and he started to bark. <laughs> At which point the teacher said, Norman, Pigs don't bark. Eddie, guess what Norman's response was? <laughs> they do now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Needless to say, the show was an absolute smash that uh, the teacher was asked to bring it on the road. And who was the hit of the whole show? Norman, the barking pig. <laughs> There are two important lessons, I think, that we can get from that story. One is Norman knowing that there was a way for him to fit in, that he found a way to be part of what was going on. And the other is that the teacher had the wisdom to recognize and allow for and accept his unique way of being and include it in, in this play. And so for us, I think in this time of the holiday season, 
wherever we might be feeling out of sync, I think it's incumbent on us to find our own personal ways to experience the essence of these holidays. And I think we can ask ourselves, what do these holidays represent to us? Or another way of asking that is, what aspects of God's nature do we associate most with the, these holidays? Love, beauty, joy, warmth, whatever. And as we ask ourselves that, we can look at in what ways are we telling ourselves that we can't experience these holidays and remind ourselves whatever the aspects of God's nature that these holidays represent, those attributes lie within us all the time. There's always some way for us to experience and express the holiday spirit. So, you know, whatever um, quality of God is most important to you during this holiday season, I would invite you to ask, you know, what would that essence of, of love, of joy, of generosity, whatever, what would that have me do here that feels good to me and that blesses others? What would that have me do here that feels good to me and blesses others? Just asking that can help us to push through those ideas of, oh, this is too much, it's too hard, I'm not in the mood right now. It can remind us, no, no, there's enough love for us to you know, call that forth and find a way to make room for those celebrations. And it also can help us where we're feeling we have to do things the way we did in the past, but we just can't this time to find a new way, find our own personal way of experiencing and expressing the holiday spirit. The other side of that, like the teacher, we might ask ourselves, where could I be a little bit more inclusive during this holiday season? Where could I open my heart and accept and extend love and kindness to someone that I might not really resonate with? Where could I open my heart a little bit more? You know, in so doing, we're, we're allowing ourselves to be more fully present with that vibration of God and to experience, express, and share those aspects of God's nature in a way that's in alignment with what these holidays represent. So going back to the congregant I spoke about, you know, who was asked by her family not to be there for the holidays because she was sad, let me tell you what she did. She had just joined a grief support group after her husband died, and there were several members of the grief support group that didn't have a place to go for the holidays, so they decided to get together they went to a shelter, uh, both on Thanksgiving and Christmas, where they served food and the congregant uh, shared with me, she was elated that she was able to read stories to the kids that were there at the shelter. And then they gathered at one of the support, grief support members' home, both holidays, and they brought their favorite dishes for the holidays. She said, we laughed, we cried a lot, there were moments we were all very sad as we thought about our loved ones who weren't there, but we were there for each other, and we loved and supported each other. In the end, she felt so filled up with that holiday spirit. She actually kind of was able to release some of her anger and resentment toward her kids, and it led to a conversation after the holidays where they were, they were mortified after the fact when they realized what they'd done in truth they didn't want to face their own sense of loss around their father. They didn't want to deal with their own pain in front of their kids. But her message to them was, you know, I don't think you send a good message to your children if you say that people can't be sad at certain times. It would have been better to say, Granny's really sad right now, but she'll be okay. We'll surround her with love. She'll be all right. She said, isn't that a more important message for children to learn? And they agreed. So healing came out of that. As we keep turning back to the essence, the, the spiritual vibration of the holiday spirit that lives eternally within us, we can always, always find our own personal ways to experience and express and share that spirit with others. I promise you, there's always a way to do that. 
And so my wish for all of us is that we be able to find our own personal ways of celebrating this holiday time. And as we connect with those aspects of God's nature that these holidays represent, may we carry that spirit with us into the new year. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you. And so we turn our attention inward, allowing ourselves to connect with that vibration of love, joy, peace, wholeness of every form of good we can feel or imagine, and to recognize that vibration in us that always seeks to feel and experience goodness is a vibration that fills the universe because it is the life of God, the one power, the one infinite invisible out of which all things are created. I know it is this life of God that animates my being. It animates the being of each and per every person here, every being everywhere. We are all emanations of the divine. And I know that as we feel that vibration of this holiday time and those qualities of love, beauty, joy, giving and receiving, sharing, peace, light, that we absolutely know right here, right now, and going forward, that all those aspects of God live within us eternally. If there's any sense of not fitting in to this time, we let go of that and we know that the divine in us is still there, untouched, ready to be experienced and expressed in some new way. We let our prayer be a blessing for our loved ones, our family, for any situation in the world that calls to our attention. We know that God is absolutely at the center of everything and that good is being revealed. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And with a full and grateful heart, just knowing the goodness that God is now and always, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Amen.